Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I'm very frugal. So instead of buying a tablet, I bought a hotel POS system. And in this video, we are trying to hardware hack it into a normal tablet. The tablet in question is made for hotels. It's a POS system. Basically, you can order food and drinks and learn about stuff about the hotel and book stuff with it. So security is a big concern. And I was wondering, can I repurpose that to a normal tablet? Use it as like a cheap alternative? How hard could that be? So this tablet is not just a normal tablet. It's a POS system for hotel rooms. So you have a special piece of software on there that allows you to make reservations, bookings, see what the hotel has to offer or info about sites. So it's a dedicated device and not just a general purpose one, like a normal tablet. I got this at a surplus store where they sell refurbished old stuff and it came with this nice stand. So you can plug it in and charge it in there. But there's also the issue that it doesn't have a normal USB port. It has a camera, but it doesn't really use it. I want to make this thing usable as a normal tablet. So we also have to hack the base unit to be more compatible with what I intend to do with it. I bought this tablet at a refurbished store where they sell used computers and stuff. I expected it to be completely wiped clean of all the proprietary stuff from the hotel, but nope, the hotel software is still on there so I can look through it. Of course, I have to blur that out for privacy reason, but it came from a pretty high class hotel. So a lot of services and stuff they have and you even can order foods and drinks and very fancy. But first we have to get rid of all that custom UI and revert it back to a normal Android. So first I'm gonna do a factory reset. On most Android devices performing a factory reset is pretty simple. You press the volume down or up key and the power button at the same time when it's shut off for about five to 10 seconds, depending on your make and model. And then it boots into like the bootloader <laughs> and you can select different options. And I select factory reset, which wipes all the data off the device. And we should start with a clean Android, at least I hope. So what we now got is not really clean Android. It's based on Android 6, but judging from what I can see in the, like the options and the menus, it's in German and it's very custom. It doesn't have a lot of options. There are basically zero apps. And every time you try to like access data or store something, it tells you that you don't have permission for that. Yeah, so it's really restrictive. I wonder if we could get access to the USB port, because with that we may be able to accomplish a bit more. So let's screw open the base. On the base I can see somebody has already been in there. The screws are pretty worn out and the rubber feet are missing. So of course I open it up and inside it's just a little PCB with a USB-A port, a barrel jack and then power and ground wires to those pogo pins that connect to the tablet. So data is not even wired in there. It's only power and ground for charging. So I suspect that is so people don't upload stuff via the USB port or maybe get data out of it and can only use this USB-A port for charging their own devices. When you play around with these things, it's always advisable to know what you're dealing with. So. I take out the PCB, look at it very carefully and try to trace out the schematic. There are some parts on there that are not populated, but I think I have a suspicion what they are. Here's my schematic that I reverse engineered basically or traced out. So what we can see from the PCB layout, we have a lot of caps for voltage stabilization. The input, like the wall ward that came with it is 5 volts. 
and there is something not populated on there and I think that is a voltage regulator so if you wouldn't not supply 5 volts that one would knock it down and I think it's current regulated so I found a model that might fit the pin out and it would regulate to 5 volts but also restrict the current to 500 milliamps so you won't basically burn out the system when you use the device for charging something else. And with that not populated, the maximum rating is determined by the wall ward that goes into it. So 5 volt at whatever this thing delivers would also be passed on to USB-A port and to the tablet for charging. We have some pins in there that are labeled. We have data positive, data negative and USB OTG as well as power ground of course. Uh, but we don't know to which pins these correspond on the pogo pins. So how do we find that out? So I expected that I'd just hook up the scope and look for signals on there and maybe something looks like digital data and that must be data positive or data negative. Then I switch them around until it works. That's what I thought. But in reality, some of the stuff I saw there looked like data, but then they turned out to be noise. And I had so many combinations to choose. <laughs> Basically, I got pretty stuck. I asked James, the bolt engineer, and he suggested that I try to make it like communicate with a chirp to access the device that's on it. And I thought I triggered that, but turns out it didn't. It was just noise from the wall ward. So the wall ward is pretty noisy. Didn't expect that as well. So I tried a lot of combinations. I soldered a bread, uh, breakout for all those pins so I can experiment around and probe at different points with my oscilloscope. But yeah, but I wasn't still not sure if I'm connecting correctly. It wouldn't let me access anything. It doesn't mount any devices. And what is pretty suspicious in the uh, in the operating itself, in the operating system, there's not even an option for updating or something. There's only install custom uh, APKs, but they're also locked. So if I would have a custom APK on there, I wouldn't even be able to install it. What I was able to do is connect to my network and access the Element 14 community on there. So internet works, but no videos. And that's because it runs a really old browser that doesn't understand HTML5, which usually all the videos nowadays use. So <laughs> I want to update it, of course, but it seems I can't like install anything on there, either by, by a download or via USB. It doesn't just let me access data controls. Even in the documents, I can't like do any actions like copy paste or so. It's all locked down completely. So my next option is to break open <laughs> the device just to trace out the connector. Maybe I have something wrong with my pinout. So if I can verify it inside device, I would at least know that I'm trying to access USB. And turns out I wasn't that far off. There is one ground more than I thought, but yeah, we have the ODG pin, we have the data pins. I tried switching them around and connected them to a USB micro, so bypassing uh, that PCB that was in the base uh, to avoid any complications. But turns out, still no communication. What I think is the case is that it's locked down via software. I'm not a software guy, sorry. So this is where the project basically stops for me. So I'm now looking for a use for it. And because I'm like very talented with stuff during the reassembly of the device, I also broke the screen. So without major software skills, what can you do with an old Android device that doesn't allow you to like save any data on it? or download anything or install the App Store. Well, you can play uh, one game. Hidden in pretty much any Android version is a game. If you go to the settings menu, you tap on the Android version as fast as you can. 
then usually you enter some sort of puzzle and when you have completed that you can play a game. For Android 10, for example, it's a very boring uh, number guessing thing. I don't understand how to play it. But for Android 6, which this tablet uses, it's basically a Flappy Bird clone, which I'm extremely bad at. I can't even get past the first gate and yeah, I, I never could play Flappy Bird in any way. The other thing that I can use this now is to access like text-based sites or use it to connect to my Wi-Fi projects. So when I have to uh, like access a web server for controls, I can use this tablet for it. It's a bit easier to film than my phone. And uh, one neat function that it has with the stand is that I can just use the calculator. There is a scientific calculator on there. It looks great. I can put it in landscape mode on the stand and have a fancy calculator without the back on because I can't get the back back on. I just put like captain tape over it to avoid shorts. So yeah, now it's it's like my style <laughs> of tablet. Also check out the big crack in the middle, <laughs> but it still works. I've tried my best with hacking a tablet that's not meant as a general purpose tablet. It's a very proprietary device. But yeah, we have like not vanilla, but some weird Android version on there. So we can use it for a few tasks, not general tablet tasks, unfortunately. So in hindsight, how hard could it be to hack a hotel tablet into a normal usable tablet? Uh, not that easy if you don't know how to like work your way around Android. That's a skill I'm missing. Maybe you have the skills to unlock this device, or maybe you have good ideas on stuff that we could try next on the show. Let me know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. <laughs>